Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Ankita and I've done my PhD from Special Center of Molecular Medicine JNU. So aaj ke is video mein hum baat karenge about the DBT JRF examination which is also known as BET. So aaj ke is video mein hum cover karenge the exam scheme, the pattern of this exam, the syllabus of this examination, the books that are required for the preparation and the previous year question analysis. So let's get started. So this examination the organizing authority of this examination is dbt ministry of science and technology government of india and the name of the examination is biotechnology eligibility test also known as bet which is commonly known as the dbt jrf examination the exam is conducted by the national testing agency nta so to appear in this examination you can either be a bsc graduate a btech m pharma mbbs msc mvsc or integrated phd student and the eligibility marks to appear in this examination have been set for general ews and obc candidates as 60% and for sc st and ph it is 55% marks now let's talk about the age limit to appear in this examination the maximum age limit that has been set is of 28 years however there is a relaxation of up to 5 years to sc st ph and female applicants and there is a relaxation of up to 3 years to obc candidates now let's talk about the validity period so once you clear this examination and are awarded the fellowship award letter you can activate your fellowship within 2 years from the date of issuance of your fellowship award letter yani ki agar aapka fellowship award letter ka date aaj ka hai if you qualify the examination then aap apna fellowship within 2 years from today activate kar sakte you will get this time limit to activate your fellowship the fellowship duration is of 5 years and the amount that you will get so for the first 2 years you will be a grf a junior research fellow and you will get a fellowship of rupees 31000 per month plus hra and once you qualify as srf senior research fellow you will get rupees 35000 per month plus hra from your third year onwards and to carry out your research you get a contingency of rupees 30000 per year तो अब एग्जाम के बारे में बात कर लेते हैं दिस टेस्ट इज कंडक्टेड ओनली वंस पर ईयर इट इज अ कंप्यूटर बेस्ड टेस्ट दैट कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चंस एंड द मीडियम ऑफ एग्जाम इज इंग्लिश ओनली यू गेट अ मैक्सिमम थ्री आवर्स टू कंप्लीट दिस एग्जाम देर मैक्सिमम मार्क्स आर थ्री हंड्रेड देर आर टोटल ऑफ टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन एंड यू हैव टू अटेम्प्ट ओनली हंड्रेड नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस द पैटर्न ऑफ द एग्जामिनेशन so this exam consists of two sections a and b section a aapka compulsory hai jisme hai 50 questions and your correct answer will fetch you 3 marks and section b mein you have a option of attempting 50 questions out of the 150 questions asked and isme bhi har sahi jawab ke aapko milte hain 3 marks like every other examination there is negative marking in this exam also and from section a if you give a wrong answer your one mark will be deducted and from section b also agar aap galat jawab dete hain to aapka one mark deduct ho jayega to ab result ke bare mein baat kar lete hain the result is announced in two categories category 1 and category 2 the students who qualify in category 1 are eligible to get the dbt grf fellowship jo abhi humne discuss kiya the amount the fellowship that you'll get once you qualify this examination you'll get the dbt grf fellowship if you qualify in category 1 you can enroll for phd and the number of seats that are there in this category are approximately 275 now if you qualify in category 2 you will not be entitled for the dbt grf fellowship however you can appear in the grf vacancies that are advertised across the institutes and the number of seats in this category are approximately 100 so har saal is exam mein bahut sare students appear hote hain in the year 22 approximately 12000 students appeared and in year 21 approximately 11000 students gave this examination now let's discuss the cut off marks so we'll discuss the last qualifying percentage that is required to qualify in category 1 and in category 2 so we discuss the category 1 will be entitled for the fellowship the category 2 will not get the fellowship but will be eligible to carry out research when there is a grf vacancy that has been advertised from any institute 
So if you belong to unreserved category, the last qualifying percentage to qualify in category 1 was 62% and to qualify in category 2, it was 60%. For EWS candidates, it was 54.33% to qualify in category 1 and 52.33% to qualify in category 2. For OBC candidates, it was 53.33% for category 1 and 51.33% in category 2. For SC, ST and differently abled students, to qualify in category 1, the last qualifying percentage was 50% and it was 48.33% to qualify in category 2, 48.67% and 48% respectively to qualify in the category 2. Now let's talk about the syllabus for this examination. So your part A that has 50 compulsory questions that you have to attempt. You have to attempt all the questions that have been asked in this section. Have questions from aptitude and general biotechnology. So aptitude mein aapka aa jata hai reasoning, quant and general biotechnology covers your Biomolecular structure and functions, aapke biomolecules, proteins, carbohydrates, unka structure or function, methods in biotechnology, then aata hai aapka prokaryotic and eukaryotic cellular organization, the cellular processes like metabolism, replication, translation, then recombinant DNA technology, then there are questions asked from genetics, phylogeny and evolution and genomics and proteomics. Now let's talk about part B, which is 150 questions and you get an option to attempt 50 questions out of these 150 questions. So in this part B, there are questions from the specialized branches of biotechnology. So if specialized branches of biotechnology ke questions are in part B. Mein. So what are these specialized branches? There is agricultural biotechnology, animal biotechnology, industrial biotechnology, then you have computational biology se bhi questions from computational biology. Then there's environmental biotechnology, marine biotechnology, medical biotechnology, molecular and human genetics questions aate hain. And then there are questions from neuroscience and pharmaceutical biotechnology. So you will have an option to attempt only 50 questions out of these branches. Now let's see what type of questions were asked in the previous year examinations. So we've analyzed the question papers from last three, four years. And what we could see was that in part A, the maximum number of questions were asked mostly from general aptitude, biochemistry, RDT, which is your recombinant DNA technology and biophysics that has your techniques. So mostly the questions were asked from these sections that is on an average 5 to 10, like to 15 questions were asked from these sections and from general chemistry, genetics, cell biology, immunology, microbiology, bioprocess engineering, on an average, uh, questions 3 to 5 were asked from these sections. So your part A consists of the compulsory 50 questions that you have to attempt. Now in part B, where you have an option of attempting 50 questions out of 150, the questions were asked from these domains that consists of biochemistry, genetics, cell biology, immunology, RDT, biophysics, microbiology, bioinformatics, and bioprocess engineering. So you'll have an option of attempting only 50 questions out of the 150 or a section maybe mostly the questions were asked from these domains only. So we have discussed the exam scheme, the pattern, the syllabus, the exam. Ke liye. Now let's discuss from where you have to prepare for this examination. So we'll discuss about the important books that you need to prepare for this examination and for other JRF examinations also. So for biochemistry, you can refer to the Leninger Principles of Biochemistry by Nelson and Cox. It is a very good book for biochemistry and this would be helpful to clear this examination and other JRF examinations also. For RDT, recombinant DNA technology, you can refer T.A. Brown, Gene Cloning and DNA Analysis. It's a very good book for studying your cloning and PCR amplifications and then restriction digestions. All the material pertaining to RDT can be found in this book. Now to refer for biophysics, you can refer biophysics and molecular biology tools and techniques by Pathfinder. You will get detailed analysis of the different techniques that are employed in biophysics and molecular biology. For a thorough study of all the concepts throughout life sciences and biotechnology, you can refer Pathfinder part 1 and part 2, Life Sciences, Fundamentals and Practice. It is a very good book to get a thorough conceptual approach of life sciences and biotechnology domains. For genetics, you can refer this book, Solving Problems in Genetics by Richard. It is a very good book 
to refer for genetics. Now to practice and get the idea of general aptitude, you can refer this book, The Salt Papers with Topic Wise Segregation from Ram Mohan Pandey. It is a very good book to practice for aptitude. Now, once you've prepared your syllabus, you need to also practice for the MCQs. That will give you an idea of the examination, what type of questions are asked, you need to do that. So you can refer this book, Concept and Application Based MCQs for Life Science and Biotech by Pathfinder, which is a very good book to practice your question papers. Now, once you've cleared this examination, you'll get an opportunity to carry out your research in the different DBT labs that are spread across India. So, so here are some of the examples. So there's CDFD in Hyderabad, Institute of Life Science in Bhubaneswar. There's National Brain Research Center in Gurgaon. There is NCCS in Pune, THISTI in Faridabad, NABI in Mohali, IBSD in Impal, RCB in Faridabad, NIAB in Hyderabad, NIBMG in Kalyani. Then there is National Institute of Immunology and in New Delhi, NIPGR in New Delhi for plant-based research, RGCB in Trivandrum, INSTEM in Bangalore, and CIAB in Mohali. So the link for the slides would be available in the description and you can download previous year questions from the Pathfinder online website. I hope this video will be helpful to crack your DBT JRF examination. We've compiled all the information, all the required information about this examination in this one place for you guys. So good luck for the examination. Thank you.